Hello, this is chapter 4. Chapter 4 is now real starting point of finance class actually because chapter 2 and 3 is in fact um, mostly the, the review stuff in accounting. Now, from chapter 4 we really uh, discuss about issue in finance. So the chapter 4 is probably it's not very difficult to understand and computation calculation is pretty simple but you have to note that if you don't fully understand this chapter you're gonna be you're gonna have big trouble um, for the next chapters so uh, if you um, do not understand like the, the concept completely then you need to review 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 you know um, so that you can you don't have any problem for the future so let's see. Time value of money. That's the that's the name of chapter. So we talk about time. Now, the thing is, we basically uh, talked about the cash flow. Cash is the king in chapter two. So the finance we focus on cash flow now. We want to know whether the uh, the cash flow today, like the may be different to cash flow tomorrow or cash flow in one year, because time matters. The reason is so most business decisions, such as the like investment decision, it involves inflow and outflow of the cash flow. So you have to invest, which is cash outflow to generate cash flow if you generate cash flow and get a benefit get a profit then get that's cash inflow so there's cost and benefit occurs and we want to the higher benefit than cost so that we make profit it means that cash inflow should be high, uh, greater than cash outflows which make positive cash flows the thing is, the problem here is the timing may be different. Often, the cost and benefit occur different timing. Such as, for example, if you purchase the the machine to increase the efficiency, you basically have to pay cash to buy the, the machine today. And but your benefit does not occur today because you know the benefit, the cost savings basically occurs when you use it for the future thing. So, if we cannot compare directly the cash flow in different timing, then then maybe the problematic, you know, um, to determine whether this project generate positive cash flow or not. So there's a technique called the time value of money, since so often called a TVM, allow us to convert these cash flows occurring in different timing to a common basis. That's the proposal of this chapter. So the last start with very simple example suppose you put hundred dollars in the bank so you have hundred dollars go to bank you make a deposit and or able to earn 10% interest so you make 10% interest okay hundred dollars today and 10% interest now past one year so one year later what would you have so what's your, your balance it's kind of simple problem because you know you put the hundred dollars right and for one year you make hundred times ten percent which is ten dollars as interest right this that's the balance today so after one year You're gonna have hundred dollars the original balance plus ten dollar which is interest you're gonna have hundred ten dollars what about one year more now if you have one more year then it's a little um maybe confusing because uh, if you believe that just that 10% interest 
is based on the original money that you make deposit which is hundred dollars then you probably just add another ten dollars make hundred twenty dollars but however in fact you actually have hundred ten dollars after one year not hundred dollars so in one year you have actually hundred ten dollars that's your seed money now new balance and then your interest is now hundred ten dollars times ten percent which is eleven dollars so after two years you have one hundred ten dollars the balance one year later and then eleven dollars the interest during the second year which you make hundred twenty one dollars so the previous this hundred ten dollars maybe can be wrote like yeah well that's the hundred dollars times one plus the interest rate ten percent which is hundred right so more mathematical way to show this way now this is hundred dollars again times one plus ten percent which is one year later that's hundred ten dollars and times another one plus 10% so it's going to be $100 times 1 plus 10% square is going to be $121 so this is mathematical way to show 100 times 1 plus 10% point 0.1 square will be 121 quite basic right so your hundred dollars becomes hundred ten dollars in one year and after two years it becomes hundred twenty one dollars okay we have some definition here so the hundred dollars the original money to as of today we call this present value so hundred dollars will be the present value the current value of the future cash flow value at t equal to zero now what is the future value so suppose you want to have, like you get the future value as of year two then 121 dollars will be the future value in year two with 10 percent interest this is going to be future value year two 121 the mountain investment is worth after one or more periods this case two period two years right later money now the interest rate is 10 percent right or 0 0.1 same right interest rate sometimes called the discount rate cost of capital opportunity cost of capital require return this terminology depends on usage and we actually gonna learn most of them oh, when we uh, in for the future chapters actually so for this example like the for getting future value that's basically interest rate the interest we get right each year we get 10 percent interest now another um, definition there is called timeline what is the timeline and the timeline is graphics that we they show the cash flow this is timeline actually okay. and this tick mark is the time so this is the today year one year two year three okay this is cash flow so hundred dollars cash flow year today is like this hundred twenty one dollar cash flow year three is oh no I'm sorry year two is like that so that's the cash flow the, the bottom and you can put the interest rate like ten percent here so that's the timeline timeline is is the graphics that show the cash flows and this tick mark note that this tick mark is actually at end of period it means that this one is the end of the year one number two is to these two end of year two three 
the end of year three. So it's not beginning, it's not ending. So this one is actually at the beginning of year two, right? Because the time is continuous variable. And all the time, I recommend you to draw the timeline. And sometimes I ask you to draw the timeline in questions, and you draw these type of graphics. Now this is general formula. Now, so we remember the future value year two. Here is the hundred dollar times one plus ten percent square, right? So we can generalize this formula like this. Now this future value hundred twenty one is equals to present value hundred times one plus r is ten percent, so zero point one. And t is the number of period, number of years. It's two. This one. So this one plus r part to t will be the future value interest factor. Meaning that this is actually compounding factor. No. So again, if you apply this, then PV hundred t equals two. Interest rate ten percent. Future value now is PV times one plus R part of T. So it's going to be hundred dollars times one plus ten percent square is going to hundred twenty one. So you have hundred twenty one dollars for the future value. And this is called this is a lump sum present value. Lump sum means just one time cash flow for which you are computing the future value. So future value compute computation is quite simple. You just remember this formula. Just put the number into the formula. You know, you got a future value. Now let's see the effect of compounding. Again, the interest factor 1 plus R part of T. Actually, this makes, this actually generate compound interest. So what's the difference between the compound interest and simple interest? And why do we use the compound interest instead of simple interest? First of all, the simple interest is simply just interest earned only on the original principle, which means that for this example, you put $100 today. Each year, you receive 10 bucks. So it doesn't change, it doesn't increase. You just use like principal basically hundred dollars original principal and all the time you got you got you receive interest based on that principal it is called a simple interest however this is actually a little ridiculous because uh, you know think about it you know your balance is a hundred after one year and basically you need to have some compensation actually to delay the consumption whole hundred ten dollars not just hundred dollars it's not fair so we have new concept called the compound interest that in compound interest now compound interest gives you all compensation for the, like compensation to all money you delay such as like the so after one year you still keep the hundred ten dollars in your balance then it gives you interest based on that hundred ten dollars so principal increased as time goes on, right? So interest earned on the principal, original principal, which is 100, and on interest received last period. So interest received the first period is 10 bucks, right? So you actually received $10 from this principal and $1 from this interest, so your total interest will be 11 bucks. So there's interest on interest, basically, means that the interest earned on reinvestment of previous interest payments and this is actually more fair again because in simple interest world you know you basically assume that you use all the interest received but it, in fact you actually reinvest right reinvest that ten dollars too for another year then the market should give you the bank should give you actually the interest on that interest you do, do not use, you do not take out, right? So the compound interest usually the one that we, we actually use. 
So this is the case. So consider the previous example. If you live in the simple interest world, your balance will be $120 because you always just have $10 each year. But in fact, if you have future values compounding to rest, you're going to have $121. And that $1 actually the interest on the $10 previous interest. And this power, the, the power of compounding actually pre, you know, tremendous actually. So, you know, suppose, suppose, example. Now you put $100 today, so present value, and interest rate 10%, and now you wait 80 years, okay? And your grandchildren basically uh, receive this money, right? How much do they get it? Yeah, how much do they get? Let's compute. For simple interest world, you know, your principal plus all the time you got the ten dollars and for 80 years right each year you receive ten dollars interest for 80 years so this is going to be 800 so you have 900 dollars so your grandchildren receive 900 bucks however if you use the compound interest now it's going to be 100 times one plus 10 percent part 80 then, don't be shocked, because it's going to be huge. It's going to be $204,840 and two cents. Right? Which one's better? Compounding better, right? So power of compounding is actually tremendous, especially for long-term investment. You know, 10% interest is huge. It increase, you know, a lot, 200 times. If you live for 80 years, keep having 10% interest each year. So, you know, this is more fair way to we see we we always use the compound interest, not simple interest. This is the example. Suppose you invest hundred dollars from previous example, so your R equal to ten percent again, right? Now for five years, how much would you have? So now, future value equals to present value times one plus R power two T. Now this is T five, so. Hundred dollars, one plus ten percent. Now it's on only five, and it's going to be hundred sixty-one dollars and about five cents. Yeah, I rounded up. Yeah, so you're gonna have hundred sixty-one dollars five cents. That's the future value as of year five, right? If you look at the table here, you see the ending amount, which is the future value each year, and interest earned each year, and see the amount of interest actually increase, right? Because basically your principal increase. Graphically, you know, the blue part is basically the interest portion. The blue part increases a lot, actually. The blue part is interest on interest. So, now that's the additional money for compounding effect. The relationship. So, if you look at this formula, you know, we see the in, in important relations. For a given interest rate, so if R fixed then if t increase future value increase right and if this it means that if you have 10 percent interest all the time if you keep longer you're going to have more money you know now for a given time so if time is same higher all lead higher future value meaning that suppose you have five years to invest now, 20% interest gives you higher return, higher future value than 
interrupt, right? So that's kind of common sense, right? So for a given TSR increases, future value increases too. This is another graphic, you know. So see, for a given time, say 10 years, 20% high, 0% lowest, and five years, same, right? All the time. And it, as time goes, the, the past, it increases. Now let's go the two, let's go to the, the other way. So now, what if you know that in two years you would get $121? If you could invest in 10%, what would that be worth to you? It means that now, let's draw the timeline. Zero today and two years. You're going to receive $121 after two years. The interest rate 10%, what's the value of this investment? In other world, in other words, you are going to receive $121. I mean, you can withdraw $121 in your bank state, bank accounts. Your interest rate 10%, what's your original, original deposit to today? We know the answer, right? We actually have to put hundred dollars here for two years it becomes hundred and twenty one. So we call this hundred again the today's value present value. This is current value of the future cash flow. Now we discount back to the present at an appropriate discount rate. And discount rate it's basically the same as interest rate. But we call this discount rate because now we actually discount back to the present from the future. The value at time zero on the timeline. And this is the same thing. Okay, now, how much do I have to invest today to have some amount in the future? So it means that oh, in two years, we need $121. I know that the banks will give me 10% returns with 10% interest. How much do I have to make a deposit? We know the answer, right? $100. Because $100 today becomes $121 with 10% interest for two years. And also, that's a, let's see the next question. What is the current value of the amount to be received in the future? It's basically the answer of this, right? So, what is the current value, present value? of the amount to be received, $121 in, in two years. So we know that this security actually will give you $121 for two years. You can actually invest this money in other way, uh, in, you know, similar risk, and you, you can get that 10% return, which is actually opportunity cost, right? And how much are you going to pay for it? What is the fair price of it? then that's going to be hundred dollars please come back to the present so the present value now you actually starting from this formula rearrange it you're gonna have present value equals to now future value divided by one plus r part of t this is the formula for present value and this factor called the discounting factor. Our example, again, okay, our example, future value 120, so future value equals to, and present value, sorry, future value 121 divided by one plus 10% and t is 2 right square is going to 100. So th this present value is also called a fair price. And this is very, very important concept. Present value is simply also uh, if a fair price. Fair price means that the price that makes everyone happy. Everyone, every market participant, every buyer, seller. It means that it's fair, right? That's the value of the security. That is what 
you would be willing to pay for this cash flow. It may be lump sum cash flow as we learn for this chapter or the series of cash flows that we are going to learn in chapter 5, given your required returns, given your discount rate. 10% here. In this example, 10% is the required returns because you, you basically make, can make 10% return you know, elsewhere. Similar risk, similar type of the security. So at least you need to get that much uh, returns. If not, if the, your return is lower than that, then you're not going to invest it, you just invest it. Uh, another security, right? If it is higher, then it's actually wrong because the salary does not sell like that. So 10% is your required return and in, it is also the discount rate to get the present value. And this $100 is fair price because you know, that's the money that you can get. You, know, you have to invest to get the $121 for two year investment with 10% to us, right? So that's the fair price. Everybody is happy. If it is lower than 100, then that's undervalued. So buyers actually buy this security cheaper. So that's not fair. That's actually better for buyer. And if it is greater than 100, $110 say, then it's actually good for salary. So buyer, if buyer is rational, then they are not going to buy this security. They only buy the security at 100. Seller also, if seller is rational, then they are not going to sell the security lower than 100, so it's going to be $100, you know. Mutual agreement, right? That's your fair price. Basically, the process to find the value of any type of security, financial security for the future, such as bond, stock options, you know, anything, not just for this clip, but also the, any finance class, that's basically the process to find the fair price. The uh, process to find the present value of the all future cash flows. So this is example. You want to begin savings for your daughter's college education, and you estimate she will need hundred fifty thousand dollars in seventeen years. Okay. So you have to plan something. You know, if you feel confident that you can earn eight percent per year, and you have some extra money, you can save. So you want to save some extra money to prepare for the daughter's education and you believe that you have to get the hundred fifty thousand dollars in 17 years and you can make eight percent returns then what is how much do you need to invest today so if you draw the timeline today you need some investment and 17 years later you should have hundred fifty thousand dollars right so your, this is the present value calculation from 150,000 future value divided by 1 plus, now 8% is interest and T is 17, right? So it's going to be... Eight, up to 17s, times is going to be forty thousand five hundred forty dollars and thirty four cents. So today you you need to put forty thousand five hundred forty dollars and thirty four cents, and it will become it will become hundred fifty thousand in seventeen years if you make eight percent returns. That's the money you need to put for very practical example right now like the future value let's look at the important relationship so let's look at this formula now for give r so fix r as t increase if t increase then this denominator factor increase so future value decrease it means that well if you so for example for Doros education now some people have 17 years but some people only have five years who need to put more money probably the second one right the later one later one so if you need uh, if you have only short time 
then you actually need more money if you can uh, wait for a long time longer then you need less money so present value decrease so for given r as t increases present value decreases now suppose you you or everybody has 17 years now so given t if you can make more return so you can make 10 percent return then you don't need 40 something thousand dollars right so it, as r increase again mathematically denominator increase so present value decrease and intuitively also you know, if you can make higher returns then you probably need to put less money right so for given t as r increases the present value decreases and this is again the graph so look at the five percent you know if r is 20 percent lowest present value and as time passed you know goes on the present value decrease and decrease so this is the first part of the chapter four next part we're gonna learn how to use the financial calculator Texas instrument DA2 plus so we prepare for that and also we're gonna learn how to compute the T time and the interest rate R